Hey everyone, it's Q&A Tuesday. As usual, I'll start off by thanking everyone for their questions. Again, this would not be possible without you guys asking me and giving me material to talk about. First question comes from Rose Antoine. Hi, Roman, thanks for your videos. You're welcome. I have a question for you. Do you think I should go with a Rolex Samaritan 11610 or an AP 15400 SD as the first luxury watch? Well, first of all, my compliments to you. It's, those are two hella starter watches. But you know me, if you watch my episodes, you know that I'm completely biased uh, on AP, so my answer to you would, to go, would be to go with the 15400 SD. Right now, the market is hot on both models, both the Rolex and AP, but the AP will trade at twice the value of that of the Rolex. So it's really up to you to choose based on what you can afford for one, and at the end of the day, don't listen to me, listen to yourself. Put the two watches side by side, see what you like most on your wrist, and that's the watch that you go with. Next question is from Abdul Taha. Roman, I have a question I want to start collecting, but I'm waiting for the crazy prices to calm down. My question is that I want to collect Rolex watches that will soon be collectible, and I'm thinking of pre-ceramic deep sea dweller. Gracias, amigo. Donato. So, I hate to burst your bubble, but I've said this before in many episodes, whether it's Q&A or what's on my desk, watches are not collectibles. These things are expensive toys. Now, there are some exceptions to the rule, and as a rule of thumb, if you buy older Rolexes today, 10, 20, 30 years down the line, they will be worth a lot more money. I personally hold about 70 vintage pieces out there, like the single Red Samara, which is like probably my favorite vintage Rolex. I bought that watch for 9,500. Today, that watch is trading at around 28 to 30,000, again, depending on condition, does it have boxing papers, tags, etc., etc. Uh, was that a good investment? Well, it depends on how you look at it. If I took ten thousand dollars ten years ago and I invested it into something such as my own business, I would have a lot more than thirty thousand dollars. So in a sense, it's really not an investment. If I invested that same ten thousand dollars into Apple stock, which is what I always say, buy Apple stock, not watches for an investment, I would have made more money. Or Tesla stock, which is booming right now. Do I think it's a good move to buy pre-ceramic? Uh, Sea dwellers? Absolutely, because down the line, they're gonna be worth more money. Vintage Rolexes have always been collected, but I don't deem them as collectibles. People collect them, people put them in their collection, they wear them, they enjoy them, and yes, they do go up in value over time, but look what happened back in 2008. When vintage Rolexes were trading at a super, super high premiums, they took a dump of almost 60% in value, and it took them damn near seven, eight years to regroup. Right now, the vintage Rolexes are, again, at their highest. Uh, and again, specific models, the steel models, like you said, the deep, the, the deep seas and so on and so forth. The old Hulk is trading at fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars. I used to buy those things for five grand, but again, it took a lot of time. So my suggestion too is don't look at them as collectibles or as a collection. Look at them as expensive toys that you can enjoy. And yes, you can buy them wisely. And older Rolex is always a wise buy because historically they all go up in value. Hope that helps. So next question comes from a gentleman named Nim Nim Parvin. Uh, hi, Roman. Great bids. Keep it up. Thank you. My question is, what would you suggest to a guy just starting in the business? Where would one get inventory? What do you recommend as a starter? Well, I spoke about what it takes to be in this business in a previous episode. I put the little info icon up here somewhere, up here, I'm not sure. Uh, you can check that out. But I did not answer the question in regards to where do you get your inventory. And the answer is actually really simple. Take a look at all the trade shows that go on out there for watches and jewelry. Simply go on Google, you'll see we actually attend most of those shows. I told you that we also do a lot of wholesale. So to answer your questions, you can get your inventory from guys like us and a slew of other dealers that wholesale this product. And you can find those dealers either online as part of Facebook groups, as well as at the trade shows that we attend. And these trade shows are worldwide. We go from Miami to Chicago to LA to New York to Hong Kong, Dubai, and so on and so forth. Those shows take place in a lot of places. There you'll find guys such as us displaying in booths and you'll be able to see the merchandise, sort of feel out the market price and get started that way. As far as what do I recommend as a starter, that all depends on the potential demand or current demand that you have from your current or potential clients. That's really up to you to gauge what can you afford, how much inventory can you afford to hold, how well do you know the market, and how quickly you can sell those pieces. And it really depends on the business model you choose. Some people choose to sit on the limited amount of stock, get top dollar for it until the client comes around, or some people choose to buy and sell and flip either dealer to dealer or quickly flip out to a consumer on a call. 
Hope that helps. Next question comes from a Jeff Zhu. Uh, hello, Roman. Uh, not many successful people out there can be as transparent as you as you have been in this video. Very inspiring stuff. Thank you. Um, I have a question about reselling my watches. What is the best way to sell my personal watches for the most return? Well, a few options here. You can come to, you can come to guys like myself, and let's assume you, the watch that you're selling, the market price is about $10,000. We tend to want to make anywhere from 5 to 15% margin on the watch, depending on how hard or easy the watch is to sell. If you have a popular model, I'll be happy flipping that watch over and making a 5% margin. Therefore, I'll pay you $9,500 for it. Let's say it's a watch that's not as popular in the market. You know, expect to get about $9,000. And if the watch is a doggy dog, expect to get eight, seven, sometimes even $6,000, because it's going to take me long to sell it and even though potential I'll make four thousand on it if it's gonna take me six months to do so I have to buy it at the right price and this is just a business rule with nothing more everybody else will do the same thing really all depends on how quickly I get return on investment. Second option that you have, and that's usually better, is to again, to come either a guy like me or any other dealer out there and trade that watch in towards another watch. Figure out a watch, a new watch that you want. Uh, if your fair market value on that watch, let's say is $10,000, then you have some room to play with because the dealer you're buying from is now making money on the watch that they're selling. Therefore, they're not looking to make such a killing or maybe a regular profit on the watch that you're trading in, so you may get slightly more more. So if the watch is worth $10,000 and I'm selling a watch on which I'm making $2,000, let's say, maybe I'll take your watch and at the full $10,000, book only $1,000 profit on the other watch, get rid of a piece of inventory and book this one in at nine, still making my two grand. Last but not least, try to sell it on your own. And by selling it on your own, there's plenty of platforms out there, such as Carno24, eBay, Amazon, et cetera, et cetera. There's a gazillion internet platforms that you can put this watch on, along with a thousand different watch forums that are out there. The downside to that is you have to be extremely careful because there's a lot of fraud online. Now, we have seen and done it all, and I can smell the frost that coming from a mile away. What you need to ensure is to not get frauded online. And this is really a long topic, maybe something else safe or something else. But yes, you can sell the watch and potentially find a retail customer and get the full market value out of your watch. It's probably the hardest, it's probably the riskiest way to do it. The easiest way is again to call someone like us and maybe you will not get all the money for your watch, but at least the transaction will be safe if you're dealing with someone reputable. Selling online can be a dangerous proposition, and trust me when I tell you I've been doing this for 15 years and I've seen all kinds of fraud out there. But by doing so, you potentially find a retail customer and you get all the value for your watch. Next question comes from a gentleman the name of Morgan O. Oh, I always wanted a tourbillon, and the cheapest tourbillon I found is a Corum Titanium Bridge tourbillon. Any suggestions? Well, it's actually a really difficult question to answer. First, I suggest, uh, I did a What's on My Desk episode called Is Horology Dead? And again, I'll pop up the little info icon up there that you can check it out. But if what's important to you is the fact, simply the fact that it's a tourbillon, there's a slew of tourbillons out there that you can pick up under $50,000, even under $30,000. There's tourbillons out there even under $20,000. So what I would do is I would definitely look into the secondary market, the pre-owned market, and say, I want a turb. My budget is this. What can you suggest? I mean, not all dealers out there hold a slew of turbulence like our company does. This is something we specialize in. But pick up the phone and say, hey, Roman, I have a budget of XYZ. What can I get for the money? And I'll in turn ask, well, what is it that you're looking for? Are you looking for a gold turbine? What size turbine are you looking for? What particular brand are you looking for? And again, be realistic. You're not going to pick up a $20,000 Audemars Piguet or Richard Mille turbine, but like the Corum Titanium Bridge, you can. There's a slew of other quality brands out there that make just as good a watch, but because their name is not as popular or they're not as popular at the moment right now, the turbines are not reselling so well, and therefore the prices are dropping. Number one, go the use route. Number two, to decide exactly what you want in terms of shape, color, size, etc. And then based on that play process of elimination, there's plenty of inventory for you to get out there and get yourself an affordable tourbillon. Hope that helps. And speaking of tourbillons, let me show you what's on my wrist. Today I'm wearing the PAM 578 Titanium Tourbillon. An absolutely gorgeous watch. Not going to get into much details on this guy. Take a look at the last episode of What's on My Desk where I go into depth in regards to this Beautiful, beautiful watch. Guys, thank you once again for joining me on this Q&A Tuesday. Thanks for all your questions. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you're not subscribed to my channel, make sure you subscribe to get those notifications when new videos pop up. And I'll see you guys next Tuesday.